he's known as the Gratitude Guy. He's been a speaker and a coach for, and, and a best-selling author for the last 25 years. He's a former Nordstrom store manager and has managed in the corporate world for over 30 years. His published works include the Brooker's Daily Gratitude Journal, Happiness Starts with Gratitude, and a number of books on gratitude. As a result of his passion for gratitude, he has presented over 475 speeches and workshops over the past five years. With over 850 YouTube videos posted on gratitude, thousands have seen his, mes his message, and he's now considered a leading authority on how having a life of gratitude can enhance and improve your life. I will welcome Mr. Dave Brooks. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. What a day, what an accomplishment. 20 years ago, September 29th, 1998 to be exact, I lost my wife. And we had two sons. One was four and one was 14. I had also lost my parents when I was younger and a number of friends and acquaintances and schoolmates and different individuals and I decided I was going to have to find out something or some method or some, some way that was going to help me to deal with the losses that I'd suffered. And I happened to find gratitude. But before I found gratitude, I found out it has a lot to do with how you look at something. And as I look at these young Eagle Scouts today and all the proud family members and brothers and sisters and relatives, I think about what attitude and what view do you have. I'd like you to all stand up if you'd be so kind. And here's what I'd like you to do. I'd like you to put your right arm up and I'd like you to turn it in a clockwise manner. Now I know the younger generation isn't real familiar with clockwise, but hopefully we're okay here. And then just start slowly bringing it down. Bring it down to your eyes, your nose, your chin, your chest, and your waist. What direction is it going now? Counterclockwise. Of course the scouts would come up with the answer. Okay, you can sit down. I could have done a glass half full or a glass half empty, but we didn't have many glasses around here. But it does depend on how you look at it. And I think we've all met people. And you look at a scout as an example, and you think about the attitude that they have to go through everything they did to get to this day to be an Eagle Scout. You think about the setbacks and the challenges and all that type of thing. Well, it takes a heck of an attitude in my opinion. But how you view yourself is so critically important. And on the days when it doesn't work really well, you know, life goes like this. I get to do commencement speeches and I tell the students, it's up, it's down, it's back, it's forth. But when it's down, it sucks. When it's up, it's great. But when you're down is where all the lessons are learned. That's when you really learn about life. And I'll guarantee it, the gentleman would say the same thing behind me on some of the times that this seemed a little tough. So you have a three by five card on your, ta on your seat. I'd like you to grab that card. And there should be hopefully enough pens to go around. There, you're going to need a 3 by 5 card and you're going to need a pen and you're going to need a partner. So every single person has to partner up with somebody. It's a little exercise I like to do to kind of prove a point. So hopefully we got enough pens and paper and 3 by 5 cards. Upper left hand corner of your paper, your little 3 by 5 card, write two words. You are, Y-O-U-A-R-E. You are upper left hand corner. Upper right hand corner, write your partner's name. So upper left hand corner, you are. Upper right hand corner, your partner's name. If you don't know them, ask them their name. And finally, sign your name in the lower right hand corner. like everybody's ready to roll. Here's what I'd like you to do. I'm going to give you 60 seconds and I want you to write as many qualities of your partner as you can. You are energetic. You are happy. You are positive. You are funny. Whatever, however you see that partner, write as many things as you can. 60 seconds, go. One ten, one fifteen, something like that. 
That's okay. Good. About 20 seconds. Good cards for you guys. Okay, and stop. Now I'm going to give you another 60 seconds. Take 30 seconds each. Read to your partner what you wrote about them. Go. Okay, and stop. Now switch cards so you have the one that was written about you. And reread it very carefully if you would. Even though your partner just read it to you and said how they saw you, I want you to see those words written on paper. Sometimes they resonate even more when you see them on paper versus how you hear something. See it, feel it, touch it, what have you. And as you're looking through those words that that person described you as, by show of hands, how many people here might hold on to that card? Yeah, it's always about half, maybe two-thirds. And I wonder why that is. Why is it that we pay so much more attention to how somebody sees us than we see ourselves? And again, I think of these young scouts just starting out in the world already accomplished so much. But self-esteem and self-confidence is so much of a part of being a scout or attacking life, if you will. Well, when somebody else sees you in that light, more than you see yourself in that light, it always makes me wonder, how do we overcome that? And one of the ways we do is by being grateful and I'm going to talk a little bit about a gratitude journal which I'm a big proponent of but it's a tremendous way to keep a great attitude towards yourself embracing gratitude that's the first thing I like to mention it takes as long as it takes don't ever give up Winston Churchill said don't ever give up he said don't ever 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 give up but it does take a long time sometimes you don't even find out what your destiny is till later in life Six years ago, I decided to become a speaker, and I'd been in the retail world forever. And I kept thinking, I was going to be a speaker when I was 19. And most of these scouts are in the 14 to 18 range, so the same thing. It took me over 45 years. I finally make the decision one day, and Connor, who was four at the time, four when Dana passed away, was now 17. And I come home from work, and I was managing a Lowe's home improvement store. Big job. And I come home about 2 o'clock, and he looks at me and goes, what are you doing home? And I said, uh, I quit. And he goes, you quit? And I, he goes, you quit Lowe's? And I said, yeah. You quit being a store manager? And I said, yeah. He says, what are you going to do now? I said, I'm going to be a speaker. And he looks up from the couch and he goes, well, that's just super dad. <laughs> and he says, I have a question for you. What are we going to do for food? <laughs> but it doesn't matter. Colonel Sanders was 63. I have a feeling these five young men are going to do phenomenally well in life. We have all sorts of stats on the Eagle Scouts that have done well from astronauts to presidents to all sorts of people that have achieved a lot. So they're already off to a good start. But I knew that if I didn't at some point fulfill the dream I'd made at 19, I was going to ever, forever regret it. And so I went out there and I did that, and that's now five or six years ago. But it does take as long as it takes. Colonel Sanders, 63 years old. J.C. Penney, 58. Ray Kroc, 57. All these people started in their 50s or 60s. So wherever you are in your journey, it's never, ever, ever too late to start and take, make that step forward. You've also got to get rid of the junk. When you see how somebody else sees you on that card, and you start seeing yourself that way, you will keep junk out of your brain. How you see that person in the mirror is one of the most important things that you can do. Call it self-esteem, call it self-confidence, it doesn't matter what you want to label it. But it has an awful lot to do with that relationship you have with yourself, which I contend is maybe the most important relationship of all. A gratitude journal. I'm a, a firm proponent of writing things down in a journal. Now, I understand we have all the technology. We've got 
every kind of a, a portable device possible, smartphones, laptops, you name it. But they've proven over and over again that when you write something down, it apply it sticks to your brain even better than something that's typed in or just said. In the top of this book, it says, if you think about it, it's like a dream. If you talk about it, it inspires you. But if you write about it, it empowers you. There's something about that that makes a big, big difference. So I want to tell you how this gratitude journal works. It's very simple. There's just a couple of, of open page for a left and right each day. Number one is the day and date, Saturday, November 17th, what have you. The daily number we'll come back to in a second. There's a couple of lines for a current event or a special occasion so you don't have to have a diary. And there's a bunch of lines to write what you're grateful for. It can be sentences, it can be bullet points, it can be a list, it can be whatever you want, but it's how you focus on what you're grateful for. Then there's a couple of lines that say special, of, or excuse me, highlight of the day. That's the best thing that happened to you either today or yesterday. And then lastly, on the right-hand side is where it says gratitude tomorrow, and that's what your gratitude and intentions are. So here's what I'd like you to do. The card that you just filled out, most of you said, at least a lot of you said you're going to hang on to it, so hopefully you still have it. I'd like you to turn it over. And by the way, this exercise is not to be shared, so what you're going to write is just for you and you only. And what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to start with what I call the daily number. This very moment, whatever time it is, 1.30 on Saturday the 17th, I want you kind of to assess how your temperature is. And that's from 1 to 10. 10 is the best day of your life, and 1 is maybe a challenging day. Whatever that number is, and you can put a half or six and a half, seven and a half, nine, three, whatever it might be, put that number in the upper left hand corner on the back of the card and put a circle around it. Next, write one, two, three. Put numbers one, two, three, because you're going to be writing three things. The number one thing you're going to write is, or for number one rather, is what is the number one thing you're grateful for if you couldn't think of any, or if you could only list one thing. Write that down at number one. The number one thing you're most grateful for. Number two. What is the second thing you're most grateful for? And lastly, at number three, what is the highlight of your day? It could either be today, I have a feeling, I know a lot of it's a highlight right now, or it could be something yesterday. Whatever the highlight of your day is, write that down at number three. Okay, it looks like most people don't. So I want you to reread those things very slowly. There's no sharing on this. It's just for you and yourself and the person in the mirror. And as you reread those three things, I want you to notice if anything changed in your mindset. And I want you to write that daily number in the upper right hand corner and circle it. Could be the same number, could be a different number, but go ahead and put that in the upper right hand corner and circle it after you read those three things slowly that you just wrote. Okay, by show of hands, how many people's numbers stayed the same from left to right? Okay, how many people's number went up? Thank you, I'm done. What a phenomenal audience you are. That's incredible. It's always about half and half. That is the power of a gratitude journal. And here we are, speaking of highlights on, of the uh, highlight of the day rather, what an occasion to be here, but every single day is not like this. And how do you overcome that? How do you battle through those times when, as I say, it's down here? And one of the ways is, is a gratitude journal. And these are, I happen to sell gratitude journals, but I don't care if a person buys a spiral notebook. Something you can write in every day for five minutes is all it takes and it can totally shift your mindset.
Now I will tell you that you know what the daily number is now, or at least how I describe the daily number. My mother died when I was young as I lost both my parents. My father unfortunately took his own life. There was just a lot of trauma I had for growing up and one of the things my mother left me was this manic depressive bipolar stuff. And I was determined not to go down the route that she went down, but it was tough. How do you maintain a positive attitude? How do you stay upbeat when you go with some of those things that are legacies from your parents that are not necessarily positive? So one of the things I notice is that by getting my extra sleep, taking my vitamins, exercising, drinking water, writing in the gratitude journal, hanging out with positive friends, there's a lot of holistic ways that you can do things that'll help you keep a good mindset. But I woke up one day, I was doing a talk at a big chamber of commerce, and I was about at two. And those are things you just don't share with people. In fact, it's sad that people don't because with some of these celebrity deaths that have happened recently, perhaps if they'd shared with somebody else, they might still be around, somebody that could listen and help them to see what they're grateful for. But nonetheless, I didn't have a choice and I went down to Starbucks and I took my gratitude journal. I thought, listen, Mr. Gratitude Guy, you better, you better practice what you preach. And I wrote in the gratitude journal and I got back to really back to basics. I'm glad I have a bed to sleep in, a warm, uh, uh, excuse me, a roof over my head, a warm house, some friends, just things that are just basics that we tend to forget about sometimes get caught up in things that are we think we think that are so important so that got me up to about a four or five and then I went up to the Burlington Chamber of Commerce about a hundred miles north of Seattle and I did my talk and it was a big group and I sell the journals afterwards and people would come up to me and talk to me it's great they tell me some of their stories and this one young lady told me that she said I got to tell you something you just changed my life and when somebody tells you you've just changed their life I'm not sure you can put a price on that. I watch some of these mentors and parents, these unbelievably sharp, great, involved parents. Oh my gosh, how do you put a price on what that's worth? Be a parent like that or have a child like that? And so I sold her some journals and some other things and I went to my car and I sat in my car and I realized now I was a nine. And I hadn't done anything. I hadn't gone and smoked some funny cigarette or taken a drink or something else that probably wasn't good for me. I just wrote in my journal what I was happy about and grateful for and then somebody told me I changed their life. So it can make that big of a difference. Now I'm going to tell you, how many people here have ever been a public speaker? One, two, three, four, five, six people. It's a thrill to look at people because they're looking at you like, what's he going to say next? It's just, it's fantastic. You never know who you're connecting with. It's one of the reasons why I don't do PowerPoints. I cannot stand PowerPoints. It's just, they just click through them. Every, I want to look at every single one of these people. And I want to see if I'm connected with some. If I connect with one, that's one more than I connected with yesterday. And it's worth it. And generally, it's more than that. But I will tell you, back to that relationship with yourself, the next thing I talk about after Gratitude Journal is you have to find yourself find your passion and find your purpose. If you have a great relationship with yourself and then you find what you're passionate about, again, some young men on their way to this, if you ask me, you're probably gonna find out what your purpose is. But if you don't have a great relationship with that person in the mirror, it's gonna be difficult. And again, self-confidence, self-esteem, whatever you wanna call it, it's gonna be difficult. Now, if I take this $20 bill here and I take it out to the audience and I just give it to somebody, I'm gonna guess most people would take it. There's always a few, yeah, I, there's a catch, you can tell, they always give that little look. Then if I do this, I'm guessing that people would probably still take it. If I stand on it and step on it and crush it on the floor, and then I smooth it out like this, I'm betting most people would take it as well. But if I look at Andrew Jackson, who's on this 20, and I tell him, you're a piece of crap, you're worthless, and frankly, you don't deserve to be on this planet, you know what would happen? Mr. Andrew Jackson would look at me and he'd go, well, you know what, Mr. Speaker Man, you can say whatever you want about me, but I'm still worth 20 bucks. And he would be right. So then my question is to any of you, 
and if any of you ever say you haven't been through this, well then you're a lot more fortunate than I am, have gone through when somebody tries to crush you, step on you, tell you you're not worthy, you don't deserve to be on the planet. Remember what Andrew Jackson said, because there's nothing worse than somebody that tries to devalue and takes you from 20 bucks to 15 to 10 to 5 to the worst of all is zero. And I've seen it a ton of times. And I will submit to you, you get grateful, you get a gratitude journal, you write those things down every day in five minutes, it's going to be like having the extra Teflon from the gamma rays of negativity because people will try to do that to you. I want to talk about sharing gratitude. How many people here have a smartphone on them? Everybody. How many people have been on it since I've been talking? Look at this phenomenal group. This phenomenal group. Either that or they're not truthful. I, I, I can almost tell what people are looking down. So everybody take your smartphones out. I always tell people that, I always hope there's nobody in the audience that does network marketing because I don't want to bad mouth network marketing. I'm not going to now or in the past. But when the thing that's interesting about network marketing is people are always so excited to share it with you. You know, they just want to tell you about what I'm doing. I got this incredible new thing. And you go to Starbucks and you think you're having a cup of coffee and they go, this is the best juice you're ever going to find. You know, and it could be true. So I've gone to those meetings many a time. But you know what's cool about it? They're sharing things. And when you want to share something, when you find something that's really good, you want to share it. Today is a perfect example of a meeting where we're sharing what other people have done for other people. Scouts, parents, mentors, you name it. It's such an incredible accomplishment. So I have this little exercise we're going to do right now. This is how we're going to show our gratitude. It's called the four T's. Text, tweet, telephone, or tell. And I'm going to bet most of you text. I'm going to give you 60 seconds and I want you to text somebody in your life and tell them how grateful you are to have them in your life. Go. About 10 seconds. And stop. So I will tell you that I am fortunate enough to go from junior highs, usually high school, but sometimes junior highs, in terms of the average age being about 14, 13, 14, all the way up to senior home ones where the average age is about mid to sometimes early to mid 90s. If you've ever seen somebody text fast, just go to a junior high. <laughs> They've already knocked out, we've already done 15 texts, what's the next assignment? And you just watch them and those little fingers are flying. But that's why I say most people text. So one day I was doing it was at this this uh, performing arts center and it was th where the seats kind of went up into the balcony and, and the balcony place and and there was somebody right by this young lady about 10 feet from me on the stage and we're doing the texting exercises except she's calling because I said telephone text tweet or tell four T's so I can hear her from the stage and she actually kind of talked kind of loud but I could hear her 
And so we're doing the exercise and she goes, you know, hi honey, I just want to tell you how grateful I am, assuming her husband, I just want to tell you how grateful I am and I, I just think that you're just the best and I just kind of, I don't know, some speaker just told me to call you and tell you. <laughs> you're not supposed to do that. But then people will come up afterwards as everybody's got pretty much all the same phones now and they'll they'll show you and they'll go like this and people go, look at look at the text I got. And there's one that says, you know, I'm grateful for you too. What do you want? <laughs> and then there was one recently where it was, um, oh, I know, do you, are you sure you sent this to the right person? Embracing gratitude that takes as long as it takes. Clear out your brain. Get a gratitude journal. Work hard to find yourself, find your passion, find your purpose, and then share gratitude. One of the things I keep mentioning over and over and over again is not giving up. And there's a, there's a young man standing in the corner, who happens to be my four-year-old son who's now 24, and that's Connor. And I asked him to, uh, do the video. Connor and Kyle, my older son, both struggled a lot with Dana. And because of gratitude and because of really looking at the glass half full, they both are phenomenally successful now. They couldn't be prouder of them. But it still goes back to never giving up. And so as these young men journey out today on the path in front of them and the great life in front of them, there's still going to be setbacks. And how do you deal with those? Connor wanted to play baseball. And doggone it, he just couldn't seem to play baseball. He had a tough time in school after Dana had passed away and after the, the baseball and the things they were, but he kept trying. So we would go to the, like to the tee ball and he'd hit, he'd be swinging way up here. Like, what are you doing? The ball's on the tee. And so finally he'd get way down and he, he got way below the ball. He hits the tee and the ball falls off and he goes, I got a hit. And I just didn't have the heart to tell him that wasn't how the game was played. But he kept trying and I'd go to all the practices and all the, the, the different things and get the equipment and do whatever we had, go to the games and he never played. And then we get to this May 31st date when they look down to the dugout and there's nobody left to play except him. Everybody else is playing. They're, it's the bottom of the seventh inning and they're down seven to six. And there's two out and there's a guy in second, a guy in third and nobody to come to bat. So the coach goes, who else is left down there? And he goes, Brooks down here. So he goes, send him out. So he comes out of the dugout and he's swinging his bat like Ken Griffey Jr. Like he's going to knock a home run, you know, and I'm just going, I just look to the skies and I just go, how about a bunt, anything. And he gets up to the plate, two balls, two strikes, three balls, full count. Next pitch comes in, he rips it down the third baseline, goes into left field. The guy comes around from third and score. The guy from second comes around third and comes into home plate and scores. And they all jump on him. And as the, as the guy caught the ball, the catcher caught the ball, the ball pops out. So they win the game eight to seven. And he's standing out on second base. And this is all I can hear. Dad, I got a hit. <laughs> and I couldn't talk for probably the next half hour. But I will tell you, if you embrace gratitude, if you take again these incredible journeys. Oh, and by the way, let me just mention a couple of things about scouts too. I was checking this out in the last few weeks. A high